So in this video we're going to be looking at the first of three financial statements beginning with the balance sheet. And just to provide a decent segue from our previous video, recall that the balance sheet is really just a formal presentation of the accounting equation. Here you have assets equal to liabilities plus stockholders equity, which rearranged looks like this and expanded upon brings us back to our balance sheet. The balance sheet shows the financial position of a company at a given moment. You can think of it as a photograph depicting everything the company has, its assets, what it owes, its liabilities, and the ownership interests of the company, or stockholders' equity. The assets of a company consist of the physical properties, money it holds or has invested, and money that is owed to the company. You can also have intangible assets, such as goodwill. Very broadly, assets are the resources a company uses to generate revenue. Liabilities can be defined as debts incurred in the ordinary course of business, such as accounts payable, and other more formal borrowings, such as notes from a bank. And finally, stockholders' equity shows the ownership interests in the company. Some of this is still a little bit abstract. In my opinion, the best way to visualize what a balance sheet really is, is to think about starting a company. Let's say you want to start a company that makes boats, because they're cool and most people like them. To start your company, you realize that you need cash to employ people, raw materials to make boats, such as wood or nails, the equipment required to make boats, which I'm sure includes hammers or cranes, and a boat making factory. And when you sum the cost of all these items together, you realize that your startup will require about $100 million. So to finance your operation, you go to a bank. And the bank concludes that you have enough collateral for a $50 million note. And to raise the remaining $50 million to acquire these items, you raise equity from individuals. And maybe even you provide some of that equity. With the additional $50 million, you've successfully financed your startup. And this provides all the components for your balance sheet. You can reorganize these items in the following format, with your assets at the top, showing cash, raw materials or inventory, property, plant, and equipment, followed by liabilities, which would show notes payable to the bank, and finally stockholders' equity, which of course is the additional $50 million of equity you raise to finance your business. And on the right-hand side, you will see that assets equals liabilities plus stockholders' equity. Revisiting our more thorough balance sheet, I wanted to go through a couple items, but I don't want to talk about all of the definitions. If you want to review this later, it will be available in a downloadable worksheet. The items I do want to talk about, however, are accounts receivable, which we did not mention in our illustrated balance sheet, and represent money that is owed to the company for goods or services sold, and accounts payable, which is debt incurred in the ordinary course of business for goods or services purchased by the company. To provide a little bit of context, let's say that your company purchases raw materials, like lumber, but is not required to pay for them immediately and instead can wait 30 days. That sum would sit on your balance sheet in this account for 30 days until it was paid. The other item I wanted to talk about here is your equity account. On this tab, you have common stock, which is typically thought of as capital raised in formation of the company. Additional paid in capital, or APIC, which can be thought of as additional capital provided by investors. Both of these are considered contributed capital. The last equity account is retained earnings. As the name suggests, these are earnings retained by the company. I wanted to talk about these three accounts because you see contributed capital and retained earnings in the expanded accounting equation, which you may recall from the first video, the accounting equation. And here, of course, we have stockholders' equity equal to contributed capital plus retained earnings. Focusing on this account, you may ask why an investor would provide capital to finance a business. Investors or owners are generally looking for two types of cash flows, dividends or gains from selling the stock at a higher price. The other component in stockholders' equity is retained earnings. And I wanted to point this out because you will see that in this equation, retained earnings grows with net income. This relationship is very important to keep in mind as you build financial models. When you build your model, you will see that the balance sheet is directly linked to your income statement and that retained earnings grows by net income realized in that accounting period. The equation is just the previous year's retained earnings balance plus net income on your income statement. 
I thought I could also point this out on a fully integrated financial statement model. This is a very small but fully integrated financial statement model with your income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement, and your two supporting schedules, the debt schedule and PP&E schedule on the right. And if you look at retained earnings here, you'll see that retained earnings is equal to the previous year's balance plus net income in every single year. Another important relationship to keep in mind as you build financial models is the relationship between the balance sheet and the cash flow statement. Changes in balance sheet accounts will directly impact the cash flow statement, and that is because cash is used to acquire assets and pay down liabilities. I want to demonstrate this relationship using this balance sheet to show the impact that these three accounts, accounts receivable, inventory, and accounts payable, have on cash flows. Let's say that in year one, you have an accounts receivable balance of 500, and that in year two, it increases to 600. Below you will see that this has a cash impact of negative $100. Inventory, because it is also an asset, has the same impact. So if we enter the same numbers, you will see that it too has a negative $100 impact. It may be helpful to think of the change from year one to year two as the purchase of an additional $100 of raw material. If we then look at accounts payable on the liability side of the balance sheet and enter the same numbers, you will see that the relationship is reversed. As liabilities grow, they provide cash. Here it may be helpful to think that you are growing this obligation instead of paying cash in that period. This relationship between the balance sheet and the cash flow statement is also visible in our fully integrated model. If we go down to changes in working capital in our cash flow statement, you will see that cash flows are negatively impacted by growing asset accounts and positively impacted by growing liabilities. Since we've touched on the income statement and cash flow statement, I wanted to provide a visual for how the three relate to one another. I'm hoping this crude drawing may help with that. What I want to point out with this is that the balance sheet shows the financial position of the company. And the income statement and the cash flow statement show the economic activity of the company over a given period. At the conclusion of that period, the financial position is again shown by the balance sheet. So consecutive balance sheets are essentially linked by your income statement and cash flow statement. The difference is that your income statement shows economic activity on an accrual basis, and the cash flow statement shows economic activity on a cash basis. And to explore that further, we can move on to the income statement. But for the time being, we're done with the balance sheet.